credit to Sunderland, but from an Oxford United point of view, whew, that was a tough watch. Hello everybody, it's Ian here once again from OUFC Fan View, and it's time for another review of another Oxford United game. Today, Oxford took the long trip to the northeast. They were away to Sunderland. Five draws in a row for United, and it's been a good start to life in the Championship, but this was always going to be an unbelievably difficult test. And up against the league leaders, that is exactly what it turned out to be. Sunderland, whew, congratulations to you guys. That was as routine of a victory as you've probably had for a while. And there'll be a few people here that saw my predictions video and will want to like pile on. And feel please feel free to do so, but just remember... If you didn't think that was a joke scoreline, then you really do need to seek help. But Sunderland, for large parts, for pretty much all of the game, outclassed Oxford today. And they were easily the best and most classy side we have faced in the championship so far. Mercifully, from an Oxford point of view, the scoreline did not get away from United. But it was a defeat. It finished Sunderland 2, Oxford United 0. So we will go over this one like we normally do. I'll go over the team news, I'll give my review of the game, highlighting the key incidents, and then I'll give my final thoughts for both sides at the end of the video. You can jump to any point of the video if you want, if you just want to see the final thoughts, that's absolutely fine. But if you do that, the very least you can do is hit like on this video, because that does help me out a heck of a lot. And if you do like the content, consider subscribing. So let's have a look at the team news starting with Oxford United. And first thing I've got to say is great that Des Buckingham is in the dugout. He was taken ill at the end of that derby game, but he is back in full force. But the draw kings of the championship are Oxford United. And once again, we thought there would be a few changes from this side that played against Derby, but there is only one. With limited options on the wing, Oxford chose to play Mark Harris wide on the right-hand side. Harris has got experience of being a winger and can certainly do a job there, but you've got to feel for the likes of Owen Dale and Malcolm Abue, what must they be feeling when they can't get into this side? Sariki Dembele is the latest winger to get injured. He joins Plaheta, Phillips and Edwards on the sidelines. Let's move on to Sunderland then. And Regis Labrie's Black Cat started the day on top of the table. And that is exactly where they finished. And they've made an excellent start to this championship season. They did make two changes from the side that beat Luton on Wednesday night. Simon Moore playing in goal instead of Anthony Patterson who took a knock in that Luton game. Patrick Roberts also comes in for Alan Brown. When you see players with the quality of Patrick Roberts coming into this side, it's no surprise really to see Sunderland not just at the top of the league, but also at the top of the goal scoring charts. Bellingham, Rig, Mundell and Isidore are a scary prospect for that Oxford United back line, but the Black Cats can also grind results out when they're not at their best. And those recent away wins at Hull and at Luton are proof of that. A sixth draw for Oxford United... Before kickoff, I'd have bit your bloody hand off for it. Moving on to the game then, and shenanigans just after the opening few seconds of this game as the sprinklers got turned on to thwart an Oxford United attack. You didn't need to worry, Sunderland. You, that was about as close as we came to a goal in those opening seconds of the game. And after that, Sunderland took control of this game. Ten minutes on the clock, Patrick Roberts, he'd already had a lively drivel where he got inside and caused trouble, but he did it for a second time. He was brought down right on the D, and it created a decent chance for Sunderland from a free kick. It was Roberts who took the free kick. It was low and it was heading in, and Jamie Cummings had to get down to make an excellent save to turn it round the post. But there was no relenting from Sunderland, and they just kept going. It was Hume on the overlap on this right-hand side. Oxford just couldn't get to grips with Roberts and Hume on that right-hand side. It was a delightful cross in for Isidore. He got his head on it. He should have scored. He somehow put it wide, but it didn't really matter because just three minutes later, Sunderland took the lead in this game. This time, they got it right. It was on the right-hand side once again, where it was just causing Oxford massive problems. Roberts and Hume work another opening. It was another pinpoint cross, but this time, it met the on-rushing Job Bellingham coming in from midfield to head home. A really classy goal from Sunderland. And Oxford just could not get to grips with them in the opening stages of this game. They needed to change things already. And you saw Harris and Goodrum switch flanks to try and give Kieran Brown some help down the Oxford left. But it was very much one-way traffic. 
24 minutes and Bellingham was just oozing class in this game. He turned away from trouble in midfield, played it into Rig, who was through on goal on the Sunderland right. You would have expected Rig to score from there, but his shot was turned behind or turned over the bar by Jamie Cumming. Six minutes later, Oxford had a rare attack on 30 minutes. It was from a Sunderland corner and Oxford had a rare counter-attack. Rodriguez charged forward. It was three against two for a while with Scarlett and Goodrum on either side of Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Rodriguez opted to play it to Scarlett, who did end up winning a corner, but Oxford couldn't get a shooting chance away, and maybe playing the ball to Goodrum would have been the better choice. But hey, it was just nice to see Oxford up that end of the pitch. Eight minutes later, Oxford actually had a shot. A shot. My goodness, we've had a shot in the game. Goodrum again getting a little bit of space down on the Oxford left-hand side. He played it into El Masuni, who again just had a little bit of space. Thought he'd chance his arm. Why not have the shot? But it was very easy for Moore in the Sunderland goal. Just a couple of minutes later, though, just where the game was lulling a little bit and Oxford maybe were thinking they had a foothold in the game, back come the Black Cats and Bellingham once again playing a delightful through ball to Isidore. He got round the back of Ben Nelson. Stinging effort from Isidore, but again, Jamie Cumming keeping Sunderland at bay and keeping the score down and pushed it behind for a corner. And Oxford got to half time at just 1 0 down, but this was a very, very, very much deserved 1 0 scoreline for Sunderland. And Oxford, from my point of view, were delighted to get in at just one goal down. The individual skill of the Sunderland players is just far beyond anything that we've played so far in this season. Isidore and Roberts have been excellent, but Joe Bellingham, like his brother, is like a flipping Rolls Royce in that midfield. And Oxford have just not laid a glove on this Sunderland side. But to Oxford's credit, and what we tend to do under Buckingham, is we are quite good at digging in. And it's another stellar rear guard action so far from the U's. Jamie Cumming certainly earning his corn in goal with some great saves. But that's all Oxford can do in this game is just keep it tight and hope they can nick something. Can they do it? Well, join me in the second half and find out. Buckingham loves a half-time change and this was a big one because not only was it a change of personnel but it was also a change of formation. Greg Lee came on for El Masuni and we saw Oxford slit switch to a wing-back formation for the first time this season. It did also mean we had two up top. But it didn't really ease a lot of the pressure. I would say Oxford looked slightly more comfortable in this formation but it didn't stop the Sunderland control of the game. Ben Hat Nelson almost giving away, well, did give away an absolute howler of a pass, a terrible ball out from the back. Sunderland get it to Rig. It seemed like a great chance for Rig, but for some reason he refused to shoot and Oxford were able to get bodies around him. Ben Nelson seems to have that in his locker um, of these howlers passing out from the back, but he's not getting... He's not getting punished for his mistakes, unlike another Oxford player we'll talk about in a little bit. But it was still all Sunderland, and Bellingham really is a joy to watch in midfield. Mundell got some space and gave it to Bellingham on the Oxford right-hand side. Bellingham was easily able to turn away from Will Vaults, and he curled seemingly an effortless effort from about 20 yards out, which clipped the bar and just went over. My goodness, this player it looks a step even above championship level. And on 63 minutes, Sunderland finally killed this game. And what a goal it was from a Sunderland point of view. Isidore, who got on the end of a looped ball over the top. And it's a really spectacular volley past Jamie Cumming and into the back of the net. From a Sunderland point of view, as I said, what an excellent goal. From an Oxford point of view, very frustrating. Because for one of the few times in the game, Oxford just played their way around a Sunderland press. And it was Will Vaux who played the poor pass, which gifted possession back to Sunderland. And Sunderland were just ruthless and clinical from that point forward. Will Vaux once again punished for his mistakes. What is this guy done to deserve this much bad luck? And the game was just dead from that point. Sunderland didn't really, mercifully from an Oxford point of view, go all out to try and get that third goal. They did have chances. The best probably came from a period of possession where 
Oxford just were trying to get the ball out of play to bring some subs on. But Sunderland just kept the ball, kept the ball, kept the ball. Jamie coming, giving the sloppy ball out to Rodriguez. Rodriguez was in trouble, got into more trouble, gifted a ball to Roberts, who should have scored a third, really, but was very casual himself with the finish. That was about 15 minutes to go. Oxford did make some changes from that point. You saw Sibley and McEachran come on, and you actually saw Hide Ter Avest come on for an Oxford United debut to play at right back. And the only real other notable thing that happened for the rest of this game is for 10 minutes to go, Will Goodwin got a run out for the first time in the championship as he replaced Dane Scarlett. There was a half chart. Well, I guess you could call it a chance because we didn't have many. Greg Lee for once got down the left-hand side, put a cross in. Louis Sibley just couldn't make a good connection on it and Oxford couldn't get anything on a second ball. But there was really nothing. We never even looked likely. There was a, a late Josh McEachern free kick as well, uh, which was harmless and came to nothing. And it ended up being a very, very comfortable 2-0 win for Sunderland. Once again, congratulations to you Black Cats fans. Leave your comments down below and we'll move on to the final thoughts. And we'll start with Sunderland, the home side. And what a what an easy win for you guys today. Um, this You look at these games and you would have expected a routine victory. You don't always get them, but you certainly did get that today. And considering that you played a day later than Oxford, you didn't see any tiredness from your back-to-back -back away games uh, in that you've had over the last two games. And it ends up being, what a great week for Sunderland. Three wins in a row, nine points from nine. And from what I've seen from you today easily the best side we've played in the championship so far and we didn't even get close to causing you any problems this afternoon and you should be really excited with this prospect of what's going to happen this season because this Regis Labrie looks like he's got this side very organized it's a young team but it's a very it seems to be intelligent side as well the way you play you've just really kept Oxford United at bay at ease whenever we got the ball you just very easily won it back from us you're very composed in possession you drew Oxford out and then exploited the space when you did get a player out of position and the individual skill of some of the players was just second to none so many bright prospects that you've got going forward but you just have to highlight Joe Bellingham as being a player that wow it's just a looks a class above the championship level already what a great player. What an exciting season you've got in Prospect Sunderland fans. I can't really do much more because it's, it's pretty cut and dry. This was such an easy victory and such an easy win. I would just be curious to know your thoughts on this Sunderland side. Do you think you've got what it takes to be promoted this season? Do you think you are in a promotion battle? Or do you think you're slightly overachieving? I don't know. I'd really like to know. Is there any 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 flaws in your side that you need to work on um, that you, you feel you... Maybe you're just not quite at that level to get promoted. I don't know. Let me know down in the comments below. Congratulations on your win. Good luck for the season. And we'll see you later on at Fortress Kassam. Brings me on to Oxford United. And my goodness, that was a, a bruising and a punishing afternoon. We thought it might be one where we had to watch it from behind the sofa. And it kind of turned out that way. If you're going to try and pick the positives out of it, I will just say I, I thought that from a defensive point of view and from a shape point of view, we did continue to be quite resolute. We were determined all the way through the game to not give anything cheap to Sunderland, even when we were 2-0 down. And that above all above is the only real thing you can sort of say that you give Oxford United credit for in this game it's just the fact that we kind of avoided a hammering and the boys did keep giving it a go and they fought until the final whistle but this was a game where Oxford United could just get no foothold in it whatsoever we can talk about tiredness we can talk about fatigue but for me this was just a, a lack of quality all over the pitch really the, the star player was Jamie Cumming he made some great saves particularly in the first half which kept the scoreline down but overall Oxford very poor in possession I thought Goodrum and Greg Lee when he came on did okay but by and large Oxford just looked a little bit scared and weak in possession didn't really know what to do um, and very it was very easily for Sunderland to just get the ball back off us and then we were just forced to chase shadows once again no x factor out wide and those injuries to those wide players is really hurting Oxford now it's just that those the, the options that we've got on the wing just really gives us no pace gives us no out ball really and we're really struggling to get up the field when we are 
penned in like we were for large periods. So it makes me think the wing back option might be the way to go away from home. It did give us a little bit more control. It still gave us solidity through the middle. And you did have those options then of Kiyosu and Lee creating some pace down the side. Particularly while we haven't got any wingers, that might be what we need to do. It's seven games without a win for Oxford now. And... But you have to really be a bit realistic and look at it and think that these games just aren't really our fight. It's unrealistic to think we're going to get much from these games because Sunderland were just such a class apart. We did struggle to compete and you just have to just sort of chalk this one off and move on to the next one. There's going to be games like this in the championship. It's the first time we've really been involved in a game where we've had really no hope of getting anything out of it. Um, and there's probably going to be a few more down the line, but it does mean it's seven without a win for United, and it does put pressure on those next couple of home games that we have against Swansea and Hull, where we really, really do need to win one of those games, you would think. Not that it's disastrous if we don't, but you just feel we need a bit of momentum now because it's been a while since we've had that winning feeling. But it is going to be difficult, though, because those injuries... If you put on the likes of Brannigan on top of that as well, who we we see the the how much we miss him almost game by game as the games tick by. But he won't be back until the end of November. But the, those the limitations that we have in wide areas and that reluctance to use a player like Malcolm Abue or Owen Dale means that Oxford are. I think we are going to be struggling to really create a lot of chances in these next couple of home games and it might just be something where we might just have to eke out a scrappy 1-0 or 2-1 victory somewhere because I feel we might have to just suffer a little bit more until we can get some of those better options back. But it was good to see Terra Vest play and um, hopefully he's going to add something to this Oxford United squad and it was nice to see Will Goodwin get a run out because we might be, he, he is someone we probably are going to need to use as well because I've really felt sorry for Harris and Scarlett today because they were just living on absolute scraps. Harris looked very rusty playing in that wing role. He didn't really look like he... He's almost forgotten like he knew how to play it. Did Buckingham get his team selection right? Did Were these called correct? Should he have started Dale? Should he have started Abue? Should he have started Sibley? Should he have started McEachran instead of Vaux? Because Will Vaux is just having a horror show run at the moment where everything he touches... What's the opposite of turning to gold? Well, I think we know what it is, but yeah, he's struggling. And uh, maybe this would have been a game where McEachern might have been given Oxford a little bit more composure on the ball, because we certainly did lack that today. So let me know your comments on that one, Oxford fans. Uh, let me know your comments on this game down below. I don't think we can be too harsh on this Oxford side, but we do need to get a victory, as I said, sooner rather than later. That'll do it from me. I'll be back to do another controversial predictions video in the week uh, where I'll probably be back. Well, I will be back in Oxford to get a win because that's what I have to do. And uh, so please keep continuing to follow those videos and supporting them. I really appreciate it. I'll be back to do a review of Oxford versus Swansea next weekend as well. And hopefully I'll be celebrating an Oxford victory. But hopefully as well, Des Buckingham gives these players some much needed rest because my goodness, they need it. And it's another tough week starting on Saturday next week as well. So thanks very much for watching. I'll be back very soon. Try and enjoy your weekend.